Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having sight and all the team who participated in the study. So I'm very pleased uh, that our work has been uh, accepted, and it's my pleasure to uh, present on behalf of my colleagues the results of our study. Uh, the, the main uh, aim of our study was to uh, evaluate the morphometric uh, f uh, parameters of the Algerian hips and compare them with the American hips in order to find out possible explanations for the very low prevalence of hip osteoarthritis in Algeria as compared with uh, the Western world. So you are all familiar with the frequencies, the related frequencies of different sites involved in osteoarthritis. Uh, and you know very well that hip osteoarthritis um, occupies the third or fourth uh, uh, place as the, uh, among the most prevalent sites of osteoarthritis. However, um, it's not always the same um, values that we find um, according to ethnics. And we know that in Asian and African populations, this distribution is not necessarily uh, the true one. We know that uh, factors that can explain the prevalence of hip osteoarthritis are uh, of two orders. You have the architectural, maybe genetic and ethnic factors, and you have also the environmental factors. And among the architectural uh, and ethnic factors, we have chronologically described factors which are mild dysplasia, acetabular protrusion, and more recently, the femoral acetabular impingement. So as I told you, uh, hip osteoarthritis seems excessively rare when compared with the knee osteoarthritis in black when taking populations from Asia and from Africa when, and when comparing them with populations from the Western world. There was a work that was published in 2011 comparing two populations of women, of healthy women uh, from the United States and from China and which found a possible explanation for that difference. So the paper was published in 2011 uh, in Arthritis and Rheumatism, and astonishingly, uh, the authors found that there was a uh, higher prevalence of dysplasia among Chinese women, and there were, there were far more women with overcoverage than Chinese one, ones. So the authors concluded that maybe dysplasia may not exp uh, explain, as we know historically, that dysplasia, uh, we considered, them, uh, considered it as um, the main factor of predisposing for osteoarthritis. And the authors say that maybe the femoral acetabular uh, impingement, uh, it may be the most important parameter that explain uh, the, pre the differences in prevalence of osteoarthritis. So the aim of our study was to perform exactly the same study and the same analysis with the same methodology, but by replacing Chinese people by Algerian people. So we have compared, we have taken the same number of patients of healthy subjects. So we have analyzed 200 uh, Algerian hips of 100 uh, patients, female patients, and we have compared them with the 200 American hips, original hips, uh, from the uh, study of osteoporotic fractures, which is a very uh, known cohort, American cohort, which for main uh, aim was to evaluate the prevalence of, os of osteoporosis. So we have included 200 hips uh, from 100 Algerian female subjects, uh, and these hips were obtained from uh, anterior-posterior uh, uh, radiographs that were performed for other motifs uh, for uh, low back pain, cytalgia, osteoporosis, uh, and other motifs. And we have excluded all patients presenting symptomatic or asymptomatic hip osteoarthritis. So we have even posteriorly excluded hips with uh, radiographic um, signs of, uh, of hip osteoarthritis and with a Croft score which was more than one. We have included uh, the same population, only female patients and only patients with more than 60 years old. So uh, five centers have participated and each center had to include 20 patients. All the patients, uh, all the radiographs have been centralized and read by one uh, reader at day zero 
and the subgroup of regiographs have been reread by uh, the same reader at day 15 in order to um, cal calculate the intra observer variability. And another operator had performed a uh, second reading to, in order to get uh, the, uh, the inter observer variability. We have taken exactly the same um, angles and parameters uh, as the, in the original publication. So for, in order to assess the femoral head coverage, we have taken two parameters, the center edge angle as described by Weiberg and the acetabular slope of tunnels. And for uh, evaluation, the evaluation of retroversion, we have looked for the crossover sign, which is an indirect sign of retroversion of the hips. Femoral head asphericity has been evaluated using two parameters, the impingement angle and also uh, the femoral head ratio as described by Murray. And this is the commonly used um, uh, table of cutoffs for defining dysplasia and for defining the two types of uh, impingement. So we have obtained data uh, uh, which were expressed as means and standard deviations and proportions and we have compared our data with the ones from the American cohort by performing t-tests for means and z-tests for proportions. So these are our results. We have obtained an excellent re reproducibility with an ICC that ranged between 0.91 and 0.97. And our populations were numerically identical, but our population was slightly younger with 66 years as a mean, and we had uh, quite uh, higher BMI as compared with the American cohort. So this table takes, uh, the, the upper part of this table uh, is the difference in terms of means between uh, the angles that have been obtained in our cohort and the original um, cohort from the US, and the lower part of the table expresses the differences in terms of proportions between our population and the population from the US. So to make, to make it simpler, I have put uh, only uh, significant, statistically significant differences in this table, and as you can see, more than three quarters of uh, the Algerian hips presented with features that can uh, uh, indicate uh, an impingement, uh, an impingement, either pincer or cam impingement. But uh, on the other side, we have uh, found no dysplasia among the 200 analyzed hips among Algerians. And more uh, spectacular was the absence, the quasi absence of retroversion among Algerian hips. So we found only um, six patients with uh, crossover sign, whereas 80% of the uh, American hips with, with which presented with a crossover sign, which is very elevated. So we think that this, these three um, elements may have, may contribute and may give an explanation for differences in terms of prevalence of osteoarthritis. We have two main limitations, limitations in our study. The fact that we have included only women and the fact that we have only relied on pelvic x-rays, and we know that uh, pelvic x-rays give only indirect estimation of the uh, hip architecture. But we were obliged to take into account these, these two parameters because, of course, of the original publication. Uh, we have to copy I, uh, identi uh, in an identical manner the original publication uh, in order to compare, to get a comparison. So in conclusion, I have uh, osteoarthritis is rare in Algeria. This was uh, um, demonstrated in a pre uh, precedent work, and I, sh I show you here on the left a typical American hip, and on the right a typical Algerian hip. So the main differences are two. We have first a perfect shape, spherical sh shape of the American hips, versus a cam or a pincer type, and a relative asphericity of the Algerian hip. But this could be insignificant because of the intervention of a second parameter, which is the position of the hip, which is um, constant, quasi constantly anterior in the case of the Algerian hips, and at 80% posterior in the case of the American hips. 
Of course, the, all these are indirect signs, and the ideal is to um, launch an international study using more performance and more uh, uh, precise imaging modalities such as arthro MRI or arthro scan. So I would like to thank all the participating patients in this study and healthy subjects, and I would like to thank you for your attention.